Let's take a look at scientific notation, metric prefixes, and conversion factors. Physics is full of big quantities and small quantities. We have galaxies, we have electrons, and therefore we have really big numbers and really small numbers. And not only are those numbers kind of annoying to write, but they're difficult to glance at and get an idea of just how big or how small they are. So scientific notation is designed to be a way to make it easier to communicate how big or how small the number is by using a factor of 10. So when I say scientific notation, what I mean is, like if we have the number 1,450 meters, that can be written as, well, let's see, that's 1.45 times 10 to the 3 meters. So I've taken a number that is just written as a bunch of digits with a zero at the end, and I've written it as another number times a power of 10. Let's try another one. 86,400 seconds. That could be written as 8.64 times 10 to the 4 seconds. Or I could take a very small number like this one, 0 0.00815 kilograms. I can rewrite that as 8.15 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. Or 0 0.00000945 meters can be written as 9.45 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. And you can do this in all kinds of different ways. You've probably seen this in a math class and other science classes. Um, but that is the idea of scientific notation. Another way to communicate very big or very small quantities is to use metric prefixes. And there's lots of metric prefixes. Here's a list of them. Um, and you don't have to memorize them for this class. I would, would give you this list. Um, in any kind of assessment scenario. But let's take an example. Let's say we have 1.45 times 10 to the 3 meters. Well, if we look at our list, 10 to the 3 is the kilo prefix. So I can rewrite 1.45 times 10 to the 3 meters. I can take that 10 to the 3, replace it with kilo, and that's the same as 1.45 kilometers or kilometers. Okay, let's try another one. 8.64 times 10 to the 4 seconds. Well, let's see. One way I could do that is I could rewrite the power of 10. I can rewrite that as 86.4 times 10 to the 3 seconds. And that 10 to the 3, that's the kilo prefix. So it's 86.4 kiloseconds. All right. Well, let's try a different one. Let's say I have 8.15 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. All right, this is a little different because now I have a metric prefix to begin with. Well, that kilo is 10 to the 3. So if I do a little replacement, if I replace the kilo with the 10 to the 3, well, the 10 to the minus 3 and the 10 to the 3 cancel out. So I end up with 8.15 grams. All right, and then 9.45 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. Well, 10 to the minus 6, that's the micro prefix. So that's the same as 9.45 micrometers. Now, if that method seemed a little hodgepodge or ad hoc or by the seat of the pants, it is. And there is a more standardized way of dealing with metric prefixes, and that's conversion factors. So let's talk about those. Um, there are many ways to deal with conversion factors. Some teachers use railroad tracks. Um, some use other methods. I am going to show you the way that is most common especially in, you know, future physics, um, if you continue with it. Now, the whole idea behind conversion factors is that you're multiplying by this thing called a conversion factor, and the conversion factor has to be equal to 1. Now, that means it doesn't change the amount when you multiply by the conversion factor. It's only changing the unit. And the conversion factor is designed by you to annihilate the unit you don't want. And yet you could say remove the unit you don't want, but annihilate is a really cool word, so we're gonna say that. So, for example, let's take 6.57 meters. Let's say you wanna convert that into centimeters. Well, we know that one centimeter is the same as 10 to the minus two meters. The centi prefix means 10 to the minus two. So, we can build a conversion factor. 
the conversion factor, remember, has to be equal to one. It has to have the same amount of stuff on the top and the bottom, just different units on the top and the bottom. So let's say if we have 6.57 meters and we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor, and that conversion factor has to have the same amount of stuff on the top and the bottom. Well, let's see. I want to get rid of the meters. I want to annihilate the meters. The way to annihilate the meters is to put the meters unit in the denominator of the conversion factor. Right? If I have meters in the denominator, it's going to cancel out with the meters over here. And then we're left with no more meters. And then centimeters would be in the top of the conversion factor. So the centimeters survive. And let's see, if I have meters on the bottom and centimeters on the top, and I have to have the same amount of stuff on the top and the bottom, well, one centimeter is the same as 10 to the minus 2 meters. So that tells me what to put into my conversion factor. And then, if you multiply it out, 6.57 meters is the same as 657 centimeters. Okay, let's do one more example. Let's say we have... 875 grams and we want to convert it to kilograms. Well, we know that one kilogram is the same as 10 to the 3 grams, right? Kilo is the same as 10 to the 3. So the conversion factor that we're going to build is going to have one kilograms and 10 to the 3 grams. And we just got to figure out where to put that. Well, I want to annihilate the grams, right? I have grams and I want to get rid of them. I want to destroy them, annihilate them. The way to do that is in the conversion factor, put grams in the denominator. Then the grams will cancel out. And kilograms will be in the numerator, so they'll survive. So if you do that, and you put the associated numbers in there, right? Remember, 1 kilogram and 10 to the 3 grams. 875 grams is the same as 0 0.875 kilograms. Now I'll do a couple other examples because it doesn't have to be metric system. Um, so say you had 26.2 miles and you want to convert that to meters. Miles is not part of the metric system, but we can still do this with the same idea. All you need to know is how many miles equal how many meters. So if I tell you that one mile equals 1,609 meters, you should be able to do the problem, right? We'll start out with 26.2 miles and we'll multiply by the conversion factor. The whole idea is that you have to have the same amount of stuff on the top and the bottom. We want to annihilate the miles. So miles will go in the denominator of the conversion factor. And you have one mile is equal to 1609 meters. So 1609 meters goes on the top. The miles cancel out, they annihilate, and you're left with meters. And so you get 42,155.8 meters. That's a lot of digits. We'll keep the same number of digits that we had in the original number. So we end up with 42,200 meters once you do rounding. Okay, now let's try 55 years. Convert that to seconds. This is a little trickier because I don't know how many seconds are in a year. I'm sure you could look that up. But let's use information that's readily available. Well, one year is 365 days, one day is 24 hours, one hour is 60 minutes, and one minute is 60 seconds. So I can set up this process. So take a look at how I do this. I set up multiple conversion factors, and each one is taking me closer to my goal. The first conversion factor takes me from years to days. Second takes me from days to hours third takes me from hours to minutes, and the last one takes me from minutes to seconds. And there we go. I end up with 1.73 times 10 to the 9 seconds. The next complication that I'll introduce is when you have units that are combinations. So first we'll look at things where the units are being divided. So let's say we have 35 miles per hour and we're going to convert that to meters per second. And the two vital pieces of information that you need to know are one mile is 1609 meters and one hour is 3600 seconds. So I'll set up one conversion factor for the miles to the meters. So let's just deal with that part first. So there's the conversion factor to deal with that. And I set it up so the miles annihilate 
I'm left with meters. Then I'm going to set up a second conversion factor. The second conversion factor is just going to deal with the hours going to seconds. And this one's a little tricky because notice that we started out with hours in the bottom. The units were in the denominator, in the bottom. Those hours are in the bottom. To get rid of them, to annihilate the hours in the bottom, that means in my conversion factor over here, the hours have to be on the top. And then the seconds are in the bottom for that conversion factor. So then the hours cancel out, and I'm left with seconds in the bottom. And that ends up being 15.6 meters per second. Okay, let's, let's try another example. Let's say I have 95 meters per second and I want to go to kilometers per hour. And the two pieces of information we need to do this is that one kilometer is 10 to the 3 meters and one hour is 3600 seconds. So again, I'm going to set up my first conversion factor just to deal with the meters to kilometers. And the meters annihilate left with kilometers. Okay, the second conversion factor is going to deal with those seconds. And the seconds start out in the denominator, so to cancel them out in the conversion factor, they have to be in the numerator. Then the seconds annihilate. Boom, they're gone. And in the conversion factor, the hours are in the denominator. So I end up with 342 kilometers per hour. And I'll do the last one without narration. So we'll do 0.235 kilometers per second to miles per hour. end up with 525 miles per hour. Okay, the last idea we'll look at is when we have a unit taken to a power. So let's say I have 25 square meters and I want to convert that to square centimeters. Okay, well I know that a centimeter is the same as 10 to the minus 2 meters, but I don't just have meters. I have meters squared. So if I write down one conversion factor like this, that doesn't get rid of the meters squared, that only gets rid of one of the meters. So I have to do that conversion factor twice. Then I'll get rid of the meters squared. I'll get rid of both of the meters in the original unit. And I'll end up with centimeters squared. 250,000 centimeters squared. And last example we'll do is, let's say I have 33 cubic feet or feet cubed and we need the piece of information that one foot is equal to 0 0.3048 meters so here I have to do the conversion three times because I have cubic feet which is feet times feet times feet feet cubed so we do the conversion factor three times to get rid of all of those units and I'm left with 0.934 meters cubed